Hi, it's Zinta here. Two thirty-four p.m. It's raining outside. I've only just got out of bed. I'm only showing you so you can see the difference in mood. Feels like excuse me. Tummies, I keep putting noises because I've just eaten some chocolate so I don't faint. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder type 1, which is the full menu. I also have depressive episodes on medications. helps prevent the extremes but I still get medicious. Hypomania is not full mania. They're just all labels that psychiatrists etc have come up with to try and label what's going on. Post-traumatic stress disorder is the trauma um, disorder. I have mainly the Avoidance, shut down, presentation, which they also call the childhood presentation. Sorry, I'm making all these funny noises, but I can't help it. I currently am feeling what gets called um, both shut down as well as um, I am in a low mood, so feeling depressed as well. Although it wouldn't be technically recognised as a depressive episode for the duration yet, but I am very aware of. Early on now, when I'm going into mania, I take steps straight away, going into depression, etc. Even though in psychiatry, a depressive episode is supposed to last more than two weeks. I have been having a lot of trouble lately, getting myself to work. Um, It's been very avoidant. On Wednesday, Saturday now here yeah, in New Zealand. I have trouble telling which day of the week it is, I lose track of time. I had a pretty big shutdown at work. I work as a merchandiser. And I went into the store. I was triggered by. Sounds ridiculous. 
that someone using a scolding tone of voice And I just froze and stood there. Except this time there were silent tears. Whereas normally there is no emotion. It's just like coming under anesthetic and coming out of anesthetic. And then I became aware of the TV playing in the store there. And they were placing rocks that said Zag. Z A G. I knew I'd seen it before I looked at the characters in the Ulis Hunt for the world of people in New Zealand film. They were burying a dog. I couldn't remember how the dog died so I looked it up later and the dog was ripped apart by boars, wild pigs and then shot. When the TV was playing, the music was also playing on the loudspeaker and it was... You might be screamed by Queen. Which is song. And then I can only listen to his small doses because it made me cry. I'm sorry if you can't hear me. I'm trying to speak, it's quite hard. It's the song. At my wedding reception and now divorced. I'm aware that I'm, I've become kind of in the last few years observant of myself, especially making videos and watching back. I'm aware that I'm doing this. The canvas. I haven't finished my paintings yet, I've been sitting there for weeks, I haven't painted for weeks. The texture, I believe why I'm doing it. Sometimes it's smooth textures, I'll rub the blanket. In this case, I believe I'm doing it to ground myself, to keep me present. Usually the object that I hold is symbolic in some way. How I fiddle with it is subconscious. I don't see until I watch it back. So my own dog, Bailey, died from cancer before my marriage breakup. The grounding is like when you're stopping yourself from dissociating, keeping yourself in the present.
yesterday. I tried on some clothes. I bought some clothes. I didn't like seeing myself in the mirror. I hardly ever buy clothes. I don't like shopping for clothes. I can see the full length mirrors that I put on weight. I weighed myself. I've put on three kilos since the lockdown. I haven't been walking the last few weeks. I usually get moderately fit as per the directions for managing my mental health. As part of my self care. I needed some winter clothes in, so we and got some clothes. I readily put on weight with these medications that I'm on for bipolar. It's one of the side effects. So fiddling just helps keep me from dissociating. It's just fiddling with this now. I'm sort of subconscious but then I become aware of it because I am kind of like go outside myself and look at myself if that makes sense. So a psychiatrist and psychologist said to me, you're so self-aware, you're the most self-aware and insightful patient we've ever had. I found myself lately addicted to Twitter. It's become so toxic on there with all the politics and bullshit. But it's like a, a train wreck that I couldn't stop looking at. Because it's free for all, everyone can they don't like what you say, they can attack you or whatever. Care block. But it's just become so, so toxic. And I've decided I'm just going to have a break from it. I just. <laughs> I started it just to share my videos and my art. And then I started commenting, and then I sort of just... Sorry about that sound of the X, I think it is. Are the sounds of it to me? It's like I've gotten out of balance. There's the underlying sadness and grief still that I'm processing. I've wasted ridiculous amounts of time in there, arguing with people who, oh, I don't know, just have these strange beliefs. It's like people these days need to have an identity.
I've already told you that I consider bipolar and PTSD to be my identities. They're just diagnoses, as their labels, which will possibly change in the future. People think up new labels or reconfigure the whole psychiatry profession. I don't know. So all the psychiatrists are arguing on Twitter as well. It's sort of like, oh my goodness, and psychologists. I'll give you an example Xenogender, which is a non binary gender identity. The so binary was traditionally male and female. Well, man and woman, male and female were traditionally biological. Names given to animals, including humans, and then it was man and woman were like the genders that kind of derived from that. And then there was res more recently transgender, so you'd say someone was biologically male, but they would transition to become a trans woman someone that was biologically female would could transition and become a trans man etc but now there's this whole new um, group of people who are saying that you just have to think of it in your head or whatever you want to be so there's this whole group for example if you look up xenogender x e n o it's got all their little flags and things tying in with this neurodiversity which um, I've spoken about before which I consider to be uh, quite cult-like um, with some of the attitudes making the them and us it's always the oppressed versus the oppressor which is uh, to do with this thing called critical theory which doesn't sound very critical and it doesn't sound like a theory which is supposed to be based on objective evidence some of these ones that want to be recognised I'll give you examples alien gender so you feel like you're an alien trying at a foreign species gender it reads like parody to me but someone today told me that it needs to be validated I mean what happened to metaphor I painted a picture of a cat that's up there Snowball. A metaphorical self portrait. It didn't mean I am Snowball. I can tell the difference. When I painted the sun up there spinning around, it's how my brain felt on fire spinning like the sun. It didn't mean I am the sun. Some other examples. Aster gender. Having a gender which is bright, celestial, and radial. These are all metaphors or feelings and but people are making them into their identities. I'm too complex. I can be all of these things at once. That's the whole point of doing art, is expression, you know. Blizz gender. Intense and sometimes harsh, similar to frost gender. So there's a frost gender as well. Bog gender. Bog gender. A bog in New Zealand is slang for a toilet, by the way. Block bog gender or swamp gender, the gender that feels like or compared to a bog, swamp, marsh or similar. And then someone told me that if I don't accept this I must be an ogre, so I sort of joke, well am I Princess, Princess Fiona now? From Shrek. I mean they can't tell the difference between a cartoon and real life, it's just really weird. Chaos gender, when your gender does lots of confusing things and doesn't make sense to anyone. It's like a freaking cult. Cosmic gender. So vast and complex that only able to process it but at a time, like viewing the night sky through the telescope. Doll gender. Fragile with soft feminine and neutral energy. Earth gender. Element gender. Fauna gender, influenced by animals or other animals, it doesn't mean that it's my gender. Flute gender, expressed through flutiness. Wow, does that mean I'm a flute gender now when I decide I'm going to flute? So there's no objective measure for all of these. Whereas, I mean, at least with my psychiatric diagnosis, there is an objective 
even though it's still subjective to some degree because it will vary, it's not like um, when I studied science and chemistry and you can measure things exactly and all that, but at least somebody, other people could say that something's definitely going on with my mood. I mean, you can just watch my videos and tell that there's something going on with my mood from video to videos. You don't even need to have a, a, a qualification to tell that there's a distinct difference that's more than just being happy or sad between when my mood is elevated and when it is depressed and when I'm shut down <coughs> versus when I'm in a hyperarousal fight or flight state. Gender C.